Call the roll. Here. 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 talked about is uh, we had originally signed an agreement to do Division 1 of the Industrial Park Road Project, about 1,800 feet. That was contingent upon us receiving federal funds. Federal government came back at the HWA and said, no, you can't use those funds in that portion of the project. We can only be used for the actual bridge structure. So council asked me to research some alternatives. One of the ideas that came up actually uh, even came from County Auditor was a concept of utilizing the availability of TIF funds from the industrial park area, which means it would have very minimal impact on the city finance. 
one as to move the project forward. So what we would do is we would look at about a 10 year bond and the payback to make the bond payment, we would certify TIF funds from the industrial park, which means the property tax that they pay would then go to help pay out that bond. The impact is that ultimately there's some impact on the schools from their uh, the amount of tax dollars that they could generate and also the county. However, there is a formula that allows the schools to be somewhat backfilled through uh, the state plan. And I went and I spoke with the county, even though there were some opinions that they did not need to provide consent. I wanted to be able to go to the county regardless and ask them how they weighed in on the subject. And then there was verbal support at that meeting. There was what? There was verbal support from the supervisors at that meeting, yes. Uh, refresh my memory, where's the start and ending point? The starting point is approximately corporate limits. If you're familiar where that's at. Uh, it's not that far. It's just west of, you know, where the warehouse of uh, Bolton? Bolton's warehouse. Uh -huh. It's just west of there. Like, it's like an ag field that yeah, starts there. Yeah, it's, it's not clear that road that, that you're thinking about. It's not that far to the west. It's not and very then, far from where we've already done. So it goes from that point, continues east to about what I'm going to say is stone's throw further than where the water tower is at. And it's a total length of between 1,800 and 2,000 feet. And it will not go through the front of fairway? Not all the way. It goes through, I think it's their second or third driveway. It goes just past their second or third driveway if you're going from west to old warehouse driveway probably won't be covered in that. I, but, but I think I know where you're, all of it's going to get done, but our portion only goes oh. to there, and then the county picks it up from that point forward. I'm sorry, so, I left that out. So it's all going to be done. Is that, I, is that kind of what you were thinking? Is that right? Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. yes that's a good point. It, the entire project, even from the intersection of Industrial Park and Quartz, all the way south down the main, all of that will be included as well. Could you also mention the minimal uh, uh, impact on uh, the city of Boone? Know how minimal is that? Well, the impact on the city of Boone is that uh, what I talked about using economic development funds would be to go through the amendment process. We have to amend our urban renewal area plan. And the, that, if you remember me telling you, that's about an eight to ten thousand dollar expenditure to go through that process. That would come from the city. However, there is a, another potential TIF project that we may be doing in the future as well. So I would probably try to roll two of them together and hopefully bring the cost down. I mean, it's still going to be that eight to ten thousand, but then there's still that benefit um, within corporate limits that would justify the expenditure. And there's no cost on the only cost would be our next phase of annexation uh, is in 2016. And this is something that Andrea brought up. In 2016, when we do that uh, next annexation, the taxes that they that would have came to the city then again would be funneled through that TIF and cover that portion of the project. But I mean, the way I rationalize myself is that now they're within corporate limits, so there's some justification of them using the city tax dollars. A portion of road that's adjacent to those properties. Isn't that something that almost has to be done before we start annexing those people anyway? Um, there, I think that what you're talking about probably, and our public works director has brought this up a number of times, that the standard of road should be brought up yeah. before annexation occurs. And I think that when Darrell was here, he was very outspoken about, um, he thought that that was ethically appropriate that that should be updated prior to that annexation taking place. As far as some legal bound that says it has to be updated prior to, <coughs> I don't believe that exists. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so the action that you've taken as council is to instruct me to go ahead and move forward uh, next steps of getting that, that process started. <coughs> Well, the 
estimating uh, some of the construction costs that we received before was about 650,000. Um, in talking with the county engineers, they've explained they believe that that cost will come down. I don't want to throw out an estimate, um, but that's what the city has spent about six hundred fifty thousand dollars to get to that. That's what it right, but we would use those TIP funds to repay that loan. So when we say it costs us, that's not necessarily accurate. What about the front for us? Can I go to grants and we pay for it and then we get the money back with some extra nuclear money? We're doing the project, but we're using the county's money to pay us down the road. You're capturing the county's TIP money to pay for it. And, and one reason, if I can explain, one reason why it's probably, and it will be cheaper, is because now, because there are no federal funds involved in it, you do not have to meet the DOT standards. That doesn't mean that the road <coughs> is going to be an inferior road. It just means that it will meet the county standards and the width. If, if it had to be DOT, it was going to have to be a wider road and much more different things, and, and now it does not have to be. So so I think, I think you're right that you know, they didn't come up with the exact amount, but they made it sound like it could be, uh, I don't know, I don't, shouldn't be using the word substantial, but there, there definitely will be a difference, because it's like a foot narrower or more. I think each lane is a foot narrower, so that's why the other requirements will reduce the cost. Yes, that's right, but not, I don't want any kind no, of thing to think it's an, no, you know, it's going to be an inferior. It's not a similar standard. It's no, just it's just not going to be that. It's specifically replacing the road. <laughs> Far that's, better. That's can you pay that? That's the um, Andrea. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe the number we came up with it would be a ten-year payback. I'm pretty sure it was ten years. Do we, do we have to have an agreement with the county on that? Written agreement, or we just um, take it for granted that they're going to do it? Or? The last communication I had with our bonding council is that they were of the opinion that yes, we would likely at some level have to have some type of a resolution or something. They haven't uh, provided me with their final uh, legal opinion on that, but that was kind of their initial experience.
Roll the roll. Certainly, we could do something throughout that whole area and just establish kind of a blanket assessment. What was difficult for us is trying to understand what kind of expenditures we're going to be looking at down the road and assigning value uh, to each one and how much they should dedicate or how much they should put in. I believe the amount that came from Walmart was $75,000. And I know it was brought up that night when we were talking about Walmart, but well, maybe we can go back and assess the people that are there. But the people that are there aren't the ones that's causing the problem. It's it's the new larger businesses that are coming in. So I don't I don't know that it's fair to go back to existing businesses and and assess them because somebody else is coming in to set up a shop. I, I I'm just asking. So as part of this approval, um, you institute some type of a requirement where they would have to, again, be a part of dedicating funds. You could certainly do that. One, one thing that we were discussing that, that came up is in the work of potentially a strip mall or something going in the north that we go going as well, at what point do we say they are a large traffic generator or they aren't, or these people are creating traffic, these people are growing, these aren't, kind of ran into the problem of who's 
bringing in the traffic and where they're going to go and how you're going to identify the cost for that, the time cost for it. It kind of came out of the discussion, well, Walmart is the big box retailers are a different type of retailer than anything else, so it's, it's, how, it's what we end up kind of with the finality of our compensation and how we decided to just move forward with the access piece. And, uh, and I think another thing that came up, even uh, the discussion about DMAC, realizing that you know some of the safety concerns, ultimately the, the last major accident that occurred there was at uh, DMAC student, you know, some somebody traveling from that area. So even looking at you know, a location like that and saying, well, you're generating a more traffic, your enrollment is up, you know, going to them even and trying to do some type of assessment. It is difficult just to know how far you go before you assign some type of requirement to be financially involved. <coughs> we do know that improvements in this area, uh, whether it's, you know, we've, we've talked about different ideas, whether signalization is going to be a part of it, all of those are, they're going to be substantial costs. Well, it isn't some of it is, I mean, I don't like the fact that it costs us either, but some of it is hard to do business with driving and you know, trying to promote economic development. But I know, I mean, I agree that it's something you got to look for, but I don't know if you put a dollar on it. At some point, they're going to run into somebody who goes, well, you know what, this just turned into too much of a hassle. I don't, I don't know if that would happen. But the only reason that I think, and I, yeah, I know where I understand what you guys are saying, especially when you, you talk about the development makes me think more about it is the proximity that it is to the entering Highway 30. Right. That's that's right. where my concern is at, um, you know, right there. I mean, I, there's, so I, I just said, I think something has to be done there. And it's going to come to cost. And yes, you're right. As a city, we have to do some of that. But no, that's good to watch out for. I agree. I, I, you know, maybe some, some token amount that they should No, I don't want to chase them away. By any means, I'm glad they're I'm glad they're locating there, and, and I think that's really important. But you know, I guess what do they do in other cities? Does anybody know? Is, do they do they hold out? Do they make them? It's without finding an exact situation like this, I can say that the impact fees are they're common. You know, for a community to say you're having this impact on the infrastructure in this area. Due to that, here are some dollars we're going to have you input into the overall development. That's not unusual. I'm not sure that Boone has utilized that time in the past. But a token amount, it, we know that $75,000 is what was identified with Walmart. I believe that that was the amount. And talking about this being a fraction of that size, probably not as much of a traffic generator. Um, are you thinking something like a Ten, twelve thousand dollars number. I, I was thinking five to ten. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Well, there's a couple different ways you could do that. Uh, you could just simply make that a condition of approval, and then uh, we as staff could make that communication with them. You could uh, postpone the action on the site plan until the next meeting after we've had a chance to get a response from them. <coughs> I hate to postpone that. Yes, I just plan. assume I would rather go ahead and site plan and then approach them. Along with this, and use the example of what we did with Walmart. And I mean, it's not a secret. I don't think it'll. Uh, <coughs> just say we feel that you should. Uh, it must be something. <coughs> what do the rest of you think? You think you think they should do something? Do you think I they do. should? I do because they're going to be they're going to be a part of the. I don't want to say a part of the problem, but part of the. Yeah, one point. 
$1.6 million in real construction costs. I'm noticing that because they've applied for the tax abatement, the jumpstart boom program. Are we just going to get back what we gave them? But it's the same thing with, with Walmart. They've also applied for that. And they got two stores here currently. I mean, it's home location. Yeah, it's home. Yeah. It's home. Yeah. I think part of what this decision would mean for council is that other requests that come in the area. Yeah, that's probably more so. Thinking about it, and you, whether um, maybe you just draw the line and you know, whether you say, listen, a convenience store, no, that may not, but if we have another big box that comes in, yes, we would be asking them to again participate in funding improvements. I think that's going to be a very good spot. And I guess if they're going to be part of the problem, they need to be part of the solution too. I mean, did, on their study for uh, for Walmart, wasn't like 80% of the people leaving the old Walmart went north or something like that? Yeah, I don't remember the exact amount, but the, the majority of them would go to the north. And just as a reminder, the study that was done for Walmart indicated uh, the new Walmart and the high turnover restaurant, which I would equate that to a high turnover convenience store too, uh, the area would perform an acceptable level for those two. Uh, so the study, if it, um, the assumptions were all correct, even when the case is there, for the time being, the area should function acceptable. Uh, it's just the additional development beyond that. Well, it's being put in escrow, so it isn't like we're taking it from them right away. We're just we're not uh, jumping all over with the money. I mean, it's just there in the case. And what I see what is happening is kind of go. They have tremendous traffic flows in there, a lot of business going in and out of there. And I think Casey would capture a lot of that. Uh, I'll get off this, and I make a motion that we ask for seven. Just a clarification. Was that a motion of approval? Motion of approval for the site plan. I yes. Yes. yes, I move to that we approve the site plan with uh, seventy five hundred dollars being put in escrow uh, for future. That's part of what we've identified, and I'm assuming that you would want an equal time frame. That's fine with me. Since you made the motion, if you're okay with it. I'm okay with that. Okay, next up, approval of tax abatement applications. Uh, this was included in your uh, packet. We apologize, I'm not sure why this converted. It came out this way. Pop letters every once in a while. Um, this is a. Uh, this is he's explaining. Uh, this came from our building official, and he manages the process of these applications that come in for these tax abatements. If you recall, this is the urban revitalization 
program and uh, more commonly referred to as Jumpstart Boom. This was started back in May 5th, 2011. We had a number of projects come forward. <coughs> the county assessor, Paul Overton, has requested that these all be approved at one point in time by the council uh, in December at the end of the year so that they know all at once what projects need to be included. As I was going through reviewing some of these, I thought it was actually pretty interesting to see what kind of development we're seeing happen in our community. Realizing that on these forms, <coughs> if you took a look at some of them, the numbers that they uh, utilize, for example, um, Moffitt's expansion of Asia, they're required to give an estimated or the actual cost of improvements. Now many times the actual cost of improvements isn't a direct relationship to the valuation of property. But just as an idea, I went through and added all these up for commercial, $26.7 million, a bulk of that coming from Walmart, Walmart and the Coline addiction. Coline being the 12.5 million. On the residential side, if you said that the actual construction costs um, were equivalent to the valuation, it's almost three quarters of a million of taxable value. So somebody may ask themselves, well, if, with that tax abatement project, did you make projects happen? Whether you did or not, it's just like the term is used. Um, somebody may have been planning to start their car anyway, giving them that little jump start has made it happen a lot sooner. Uh, this is a short-term project. This is only a 10-year program. So we're hopeful that during that economic uh, downturn, again, by that program, we've seen a lot of new development occur. Some people that may not have moved it forward without this state program. The commercial investment was huge, but to me, even bigger was all the renovations, all the people putting money back into the properties. I thought that was good. I know we don't get any tax money from the high school, but it sure would be nice to have it in there. So anyway, what um, part of this, they're looking for approval. Uh, if there's any individual item that for some reason you would like to remove, uh, otherwise the building official in his action form had identified that, uh, and I can read this, <laughs> the building official recommends approval of all submitted tax abatement applications. Just so when someone asks me on the schedule, what does this mean for? For commercial, it's three years, 100% abatement. Okay. Uh, for residential, it's a five year, although they're limited on the amount uh, that can be abated. I believe it's a maximum of 75,000 per month. Per month. Right. Yeah. And there's a minimum. They have to do a certain amount of improvements to qualify as well. Yeah. Actually, you're supposed to make application so prior to it. I mean, yes. KC did already. Yeah. I guess I didn't realize that you could do it anywhere in town. I thought they had to say just the town you could do it. So I know it gets confusing. Some of our projects that we have are restricted to certain areas of town, but this one, because it's an urban revitalization instead of an urban renewal, it is for the entire community. I'm sure that's not one thing. Yeah, because last time we were on the east of town, and uh, now there's one two doors up from it. So you're looking for? Yes, uh, we'll be looking for a motion council to approve uh, the application that is submitted. Motion to approve? Second. All the Yes. 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 Yes.